rider came to me to deliver an order on behalf of the great pharaoh. It's a great honor. True, but it would be an even greater honor for me if I managed to find a solution to his problem. Excuse me if I respectfully ask you, what is the problem the pharaoh wants to set forth? I don't know exactly, but I know it's about a dream. The king wants to know what it means. May Horus assist you from on high and illuminate your mind. The High Chamberlain is here. So who have you sent for, Great Chamberlain? I sent for the best diviners and magicians in the Kingdom of Egypt. They will be able to interpret your dream. I hope these wise men are able to interpret my dream. Would you like to recount your dream, my lord? I was standing by the Nile, and I saw seven well-fed cows that browsed in the reed grass. Then, seven other cows came out of the river, ill-looking and mean, and ate them up. At this point, I woke up. The meaning of this dream is not really clear to me. It's pretty obscure to me also. Then I fell asleep again and had another dream. I saw seven full heads of grain on one stalk. Next to them I saw seven thin heads that devoured the seven good ones. Then I woke up very disturbed because of this nightmare. This other dream isn't very clear to me either. It's very obscure to me as well. I gathered all the diviners of my court and all the wise men of Egypt, but nobody knew how to interpret my dream, and now I want your explanation. What do you say about it then? We need a lot more time to study and really understand the dream. I see, so you diviners don't have the answer either. No, no, we need time. It takes time. Give us more time. Much more time. Your Majesty, they need more time to answer. They all give me this answer because they don't dare to say that they don't know. Your Majesty, Your Majesty. What do you have to say? Speak, come on. Your Majesty. Come on, get up and speak, I said. Majesty, I was in jail with the Chief of the Bakers. One night we each had a dream and the young Hebrew interpreted what would happen. I was acquitted and he was hanged. Go ahead and call him and bring him to my chambers. He's a mere slave. What could he possibly know? I said to bring him to my chambers. Remember, the seven lean cows came up from the river while the fine-looking ones fed in the grass. They went to the fine-looking ones and devoured them. And the seven heads of good grain were also swallowed by the empty ones. Have you ever heard of such a dream? It won't be me answering you, sir, but my God, I am nothing more than a humble slave. But can you tell me the meaning of what I saw in my dream? Certainly, Lord. You had one dream, not two. The seven fine cows represent seven years, like the seven good ears of wheat represent seven years, just like the seven bad cows and the seven empty ears of wheat. Here's the interpretation of the dream. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt. After these seven years, there will be seven years of famine that will be very grievous. You had twice the same dream because it has been set by God. You dreamt what Jehovah has imposed. What should I do now? What should I do? I didn't ask what you are called. My name is Joseph. I am the son of Jacob, also called Israel. I worship the holy invisible God. I communicate that the dream has been interpreted. Did the slave interpret it? He's no longer a slave. How much did the Pharaoh pay him? He didn't pay him and he'll never pay for it. This is the first time such a thing has ever happened. Only you have been paid by the Pharaoh to interpret his dreams. Will the Pharaoh invite this Hebrew to court? It would be against the rules. He's a mere Hebrew. The great Pharaoh can do whatever he wants. Yes, but we must see that he obeys the rules. The Hebrews shouldn't be allowed to frequent the courts. I say that the divine Pharaoh can do whatever he wants. However, we must admit that the Hebrew diviner was able to satisfy the Pharaoh. But the issue remains. Hebrews should be prohibited from coming to Egypt. And what would we do without them? We need servants, physicians, weavers, sculptors, and other skilled artisans. Had the chief of the cupbearers not spoken, the problem wouldn't have occurred, and the servant would have remained just a servant. He's of no importance.
Now we need to appoint overseers to take one-fifth of the harvest during the seven years of plenty. Great Pharaoh, who will you commission to lead this great mission? The one who disclosed God's plans to me. May Joseph come before me. How did I find a man who speaks the voice of God? Therefore, as of today, you shall be governor of my domain, and the people will obey your commands. And only I will be greater than you. I shall give you my ring. Come here. Come here, Chamberlain. Now take off your mantle and give it to Joseph to wear. Get up, Joseph. Everyone will know now that without your permission, no man may lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Your name will be Zafnath Paniach, and the priest Potipharach will give you his daughter Asnath as wife. Joseph entered into the Pharaoh's service. He was only 30 years old, and as he foretold, there were seven years of plenty, and the land brought forth much harvest. He passed through the whole land of Egypt and gathered the harvest of the seven years of plenty, storing it in huge barns. The grain was like the sand of the desert, overflowing so much that he stopped counting it. The people stored the food to prepare for the seven years of famine. Look, he became the Viceroy of Egypt. The Pharaoh never makes a decision without consulting him. But then, as Joseph foretold, the time of the famine began, and everyone could see that the young Hebrew had been able to interpret the strange dreams of the Pharaoh well. When the land of Egypt was hungry, people gathered in front of the Pharaoh's palace. Speak, Chamberlain. What is it the people want from me? Your people want bread, my king. Go to the wheat stores. Joseph will satisfy you. Will Joseph's wheat be enough for all? There's wheat for everybody. Enough that it can be sold, too. See, great is the Pharaoh, satiates us. And his viceroy is great as well. Horus, the divine Ebis, lives in the Pharaoh. The viceroy's god is also very powerful, don't you think? All say he is invisible, but that he is the god of all gods. They say that he's more powerful than Horus. Most High Jehovah, my Lord, thank you for satiating the people of Egypt. Blessed always be your holy name, my Lord. Only those who have the money to buy wheat will enter the city! From which distant land do you come in order to buy the wheat? 
become from the High Nubia, my lord. How much money have you brought with you to buy it? I will give you three sacks of wheat, and you will pay just four gold coins for the pharaoh. The wheat must be enough for many, and the pharaoh doesn't need your gold. May the next one come here. Those are my brothers. They didn't recognize me. On the advice of Reuben and Judah, they threw me into an empty well instead of killing me. Ah! But why did my brothers do it? What did I do wrong? They could never imagine that their young brother lives here as the Viceroy of Egypt. Why are you so many and coming to me all together? Because we are brothers. We are one family. Tell me, from which land do you come? from the land of Canaan to buy wheat. It would have been enough if only one of you had come. But we have never separated from one another, your highness. Then I will tell you who you are. You are spies, enemies of the Pharaoh, and you want to discover the weaknesses of the kingdom of Egypt. No, my lord, we are honest sons of a man, father of 12 sons afflicted with famine in the land of Canaan, so he sent us. And so why did your father not come instead of all of you? He's old, my lord, very old, and our youngest brother remained with him. He kept with him because he was afraid something might happen to him, you know? Your father is right to be afraid, but didn't you say you were twelve brothers? I only see ten men before me. If another one remained with your father, there is still one missing. Where is your other brother? You are lying to me, you're just spies. We're not spies, we want to buy wheat. Our other brother, the one who's missing, whose name is Joseph, was devoured by a beast in the desert while he was with his herd. Is this the truth? If you don't give me proof of what you say, you will never leave this palace again. Now send someone to pick up your younger brother that you spoke of. If you can prove that you're telling the truth, I will set you free. Otherwise, I'll condemn you as spies. Remember, bring back your brother very soon or you will die. Guards, take them. <sighs> Put them in jail and don't let them out again until I order it. I'm not hungry. I've lost my appetite. I don't even want to eat this my fruit. My brother, you're right. I really don't understand why they locked us in here. Brothers, it seems to me that this Viceroy is angry with us for a reason I don't understand. I had the feeling that he knew us. I don't think he knows us. When could we have had anything to do with the Viceroy of Egypt? Never, never. We just wanted to buy some wheat, nothing else. That's right. Maybe we offended him without knowing it, but we didn't mean to. Now all of you but one will return to your father. Take your younger brother and bring him here. I will choose one of you to stay here as my hostage. Him. What's his name? Simeon. Simeon. Very well. He will stay as my hostage. And thus you will tell the truth. If you do not come back, the hostage will die as spies deserve to die. Give me arms, please. Arms. Take. Brothers, we're almost there. Scribe, did those spies of Canaan return from their journey? No, my lord, they haven't yet, and we cannot be sure that the Hebrews ever will. If they do not return, we will be forced to kill the hostage. We have to wait a little longer, my lord. They may have come across some kind of difficulty or problem on their return journey. You are right. I did not think of that. So the nine brothers of Joseph returned to their father, Jacob. And as he heard the news, he prayed. Oh, great Jehovah, listen to me. Let my children return home safe and sound and I'll celebrate you with sacrifices and offerings. 
My sons, return now to the Viceroy and take Benjamin with you. But remember that if you come back without him, I'll die of grief. Why are you taking our luggage? Because the Viceroy is waiting for you. Oh, leave us alone. Get off me. Welcome back, brothers. Here we are, Here my we son. are, my sir. I want to know everything about your family. Are they in good health? Is your father well? Is he still oh. alive? Oh. Oh. My family is doing all right, but my poor old father suffers for us greatly, your highness. Very soon you will leave with the wheat you asked for. Thank you, your highness, for your magnanimity. We really do need that wheat to survive. Well, I see you brought your little brother. What's his name? I'm Benjamin, the dearest son of my father Jacob. But before, it wasn't me the dearest one, it was my brother Joseph. I did not know this story. I am sorry for your brother. It's a great sorrow for me too, because I miss him a lot. Now you will eat, you will be my guests, and then you may leave with all the grain you need. Oh, why are you giving me all this food? I've already told you I've had enough, I'm not hungry. Viceroy ordered me to. <laughs> this food is good. you to lay down your sacks, thieves. Don't say that, soldier. We are not thieves. Open your sacks. I want to see what you stole. I was right, you are thieves. Why do you repay good with evil? This is the silver cup in which the Viceroy drinks and in which he reads his premonitions. Did you think you would get away with these things? Why did you steal the cup? Is this the way you honor your father, the one you pretend to love so much? Is this the way? You have proved that my suspicions about you were well founded. You are thieves, you are thieves and spies. We promise you, sir, we're not thieves. This fact is inexplicable. We didn't steal anything, your highness. Do you have any idea of who it could have been? None of us stole anything. Sir, take one of us as a slave instead of Benjamin. Otherwise, how could we return to our father without him? <sighs> but my soldiers found the evidence in his sack. Should we take them away now, my lord? Go, go. None of us will harm Benjamin. I have punished you enough. Now release him. The prisoner is released as you commanded, my lord. You saw me and you did not recognize me. I am Joseph. Brother, brother, I find you again. That's a gift of Jehovah. I am Joseph, your brother. How is my father? Does he still remember me, his son? Please, please, come close, get up. I am Joseph, the brother you sold as a slave. But please, do not be sorry for having sold me, because Jehovah sent me here before you to save your lives. Blessed be Jehovah. Go to my father and tell him that God has imposed that I be the Lord of Egypt. You saved Egypt, and now Egypt will be the home of your family. 
Now your brothers will leave for your land. And when they reach it, they will take your old father, the women, the children, the servants, and all their possessions and bring them back to Egypt. Jacob, this is for you. I'm not hungry. I'm thinking of my far-off sons. Jacob, don't be sad. They'll come back. I hope so. I miss them so much. Jacob, Jacob, listen to me. Is that you, Lord? Here I am. Don't have any fear. Your sons will come back and you'll go to Egypt where Joseph will close your eyes. My life will end in Egypt near my son Joseph. Yes, Jacob. You'll live a long time in Egypt near your son Joseph. Every moment of my life I will sing your praises, O Lord my God. You, your sons and your descendants will joy forever in grace because you have my blessing. I thank you, Lord, for me and for mine. I trust you with all my heart. You have my blessing. <laughs>